High Adventure. Tonight's story by Ron Evans is entitled Phoebe at the Bridge. In the year 480 B.C., Xerxes, the great king of Persia, had advanced across the Dardanelles, the narrow strait which separates Europe from Asia. Already he was the mighty conqueror and ruler of lands that stretched from northern India in the east to Egypt in the west. Now his eyes were on the fertile regions of the northern Mediterranean. Only one civilized community stood in the way of his highly trained and splendidly equipped army, the small city-states of Greece. His advance into Macedonia and Thrace, parts of northern Greece, met little resistance from the disorganized and terrified villagers who fled before the awe-inspiring horde of disciplined cavalry and infantry. It seemed that nothing on earth could stop this terrifying juggernaut from the east. There was panic in the small village of Mephany on the west bank of a wide river. At their present rate of advance, it was realized the Persians would reach the river by dawn the next morning. Only by cutting down a wide rope bridge could they be delayed long enough to allow the villagers to escape into the mountains. Can we cut down the bridge now? If we do this, many of our people on the east bank who are trying to escape will be trapped. I agree. It is a hard decision, Anaxis, but can we risk all our lives for the sake of a few? It is only a work of two men for a few minutes with axes to cut down the bridge. As soon as the Persian advance guard is sighted, the work will be done. And what if Xerxes has sent mounted men to the north and crossed at our tax? They will come down on our side of the river, secure the bridge, and cut off our escape route to the mountains. We must take some risk, Herion. The council has given me full authority, and it is my decision to wait until the last moment. Leave our rear guard tactics to me, and you concentrate in evacuating our people to safety. Yes. Well, how long will it take the Persians to repair the bridge? Two days, at least. By then, I trust, you will be off the plain and into the foothills. It's what if Xerxes goes north and crosses at our taxes? He won't do that. It is three days' march there, and he knows how time is important. I bow before your judgment, Anaxis. What plans have you for your own safety? I have selected fifty men and the best horses. Tonight, we shall ride down the river towards the estuary and watch the Persian crossing from Sinan Hill. In two days, we shall join you. But if, in the meantime, the Persians send their cavalry to attack you, we shall be ready to engage them. Whatever happens, Herion, your party of refugees will have time. You will leave tonight. But what of the bridge? My brother Lysias will stay here and wait for the right time. Though I admire your humanity in allowing the stragglers to cross the river, I question your wisdom in doing it. Nevertheless, Herion, it is my decision. Now go. The people are packed and ready for you to lead them. As you wish. May the gods take good care of you. And may they preserve our women and children entrusted to your care, my friend. In the hands of the gods, it is. Arian led off the villagers at noon. Their numbers had been trebled by refugees from the East Bank, who were arriving all the time in small family groups. Late that night, Armaxus had his force ready to ride south. He took a last look around the white stone building he called his home. With him was his brother, who had volunteered to remain behind to destroy the bridge. Phoebe, Arian's daughter, was also there. Against her father's wishes, she had elected to remain with the brothers one of whom she intended to marry, though who the lucky brother would be, not even Phoebe knew as yet. A last drink before we go, Lysias. Oh, not too much. I can't afford to fall asleep. I shall keep you awake, never fear. You will not, Phoebe. You are to ride south with the rest of us. I've made up my mind to stay with Lysias. I can't allow it. <laughs> are you jealous, Arnaxis? Yes, he is. I can see it written in his eyes. You are both wrong. 
Phoebe, your father put you into my care and your welfare is my responsibility. My life is my own responsibility. You see, she's a determined girl. It is too dangerous. If Lysias needs company, I'll detail Alcetas to remain behind with him. I want to do it. And what if there is danger? Are you going to be so foolish as to tell me this is only a man's task? It is. Then you are a fool, Arnaxis. Our history is filled with the heroic exploits of our women. The gods have ordained that a woman must fight alongside her man. Is Lysias your man? Perhaps. I have yet to decide. Oh, so I still have hope. As much as Lysias? <laughs> well, that is a relief. But if you refuse to allow me to stay with Lysias until the Persians come, then he will weigh heavier in my estimation. You were right, Lysias. She is a very determined girl. Very well. Remain here with my brother. Let us drink to success, and may the gods smooth the path for you to rejoin us tomorrow. Go now, and send back the two men who are guarding the approach to the bridge. We shall leave your horses ready saddled in the stable here. The night was dark and cold. In the distant eastern sky could be seen the loom of the Persian campfires. Lysias and Phoebe stationed themselves on the eastern side of the bridge, each carrying an axe. Though Lysias was dressed in the armour of a Macedonian warrior, Phoebe wore only a short athlete's tunic, and a bearskin cape helped to keep out the chill air. Soon the red glow in the sky changed to grey as dawn advanced. Oh, oh what a painfully long night that was. Oh, yes, I... I'm glad it's over. The flow of refugees has stopped. We could cut down the bridge now. No, no not yet. Arnaxus' orders were to wait until the Persians try to cross. As you say. We should see them soon. Their mm. camp can't be more than two hours' march away. I'm told there are more than 250,000 men in their army. Even if the cities in the south mobilize an army, I don't see how they could win. They can only try. Though I have heard that it is doubtful if more than 10,000 could be raised... To our standards, even that is a gigantic army. Yes, 10,000 against 250,000. Yet fight we must, or become slaves of the Persians. I'd die first. Your brother was telling me that they... Lysias, Lysias, look over there, on the west bank. Soldiers, Persians. They must but... cross that river by boat to catch us unawares. Quickly, start cutting. They'll be on us in a few minutes. See, see, they're running. Lysias! Lysias, where are you going? Look at the ropes. I'll try to delay them. Though they were trapped on the wrong side of the bridge, Phoebe hacked furiously at the hempen rope, while Lysias raced to meet the Persian patrol on the west bank. It was too late. Drawing his sword and holding his shield before him, Lysias stood his ground on the wooden boards as the enemy charged him. He fought with the tenacity of a mountain lion, but the Persian force was too great. He fell, pierced by a dozen swords and lances. Then the Persians swept swept on to where Phoebe wielded her axe. When they were almost upon her, she turned and desperately lay about her with the axe. She cut down two of the leading men, but was pinned down before she could swing the axe for the third time. Then she was dragged to her feet and brought to face a Persian officer. Kill me! Kill me like you did Lysias! Ah, so here we have a woman soldier. Did you really think you could hold up the army of the great king with an axe? Your great king is a Persian pig! Now kill me for saying that. <laughs> we have a better use for you, sweet one. Only a fool would waste such beauty on the end of a sword. Haldizo, take her to the officer's baggage train. Their heroism had been in vain. When the sun rose up from the low-lying hills in the east, the great king's army rolled forward to the bridge, and the crossing began. The last of the daylight hours were taken up by the crossing of Xerxes and his baggage and entourage. A gigantic purple and gold tent was erected in the camp center for them. As the camp settled down for the night, Xerxes was told the story of the heroic man and woman who had tied to destroy the vital bridge. Out of curiosity, he ordered that Phoebe be brought before him. So you are the heroine who tried to stop my army. I am Phoebe of Metheny. How old are you? Sixteen. 
For a Macedonian, you are very beautiful. Are you wed? No. Are you untouched by man? I am. You do not bow your head to me when you speak as a slave or prisoner should. Is that because you still regard me as an enemy? You are my enemy. How can I think of you any other way? <laughs> you are so beautiful, I'm going to put you among my other women. When I have finished briefing my generals, I shall call you to my quarters. By morning, you will not regard me as an enemy. You will be alone in your quarters? You are in need of court etiquette. Yes, I shall be alone. Why do you ask? Because when we are alone, my nails and teeth will tear at your bloated flesh. You are indeed brave. Fiery woman from the Macedonian plains. A challenging prize for any man. Because you are both fiery and beautiful, your life is spared this night. But when you are called to my quarters, be sure to come with a smile and your heart filled with generosity for my mercy. Take her to the women's quarters. Instruct the Lycian woman, Chrysos, to tutor her in all that is required. Uh, leave me. I'll never be a slave to you Persians. Never. Kill me. Tell me, you hear? Tell me. My Tell lord, me. such a woman could bring troubles upon us. <laughs> no woman east of the Hellespont would have dared to speak to me like that, Akmo. But you see, Chrysos will tame her. And what trouble can a girl like that bring down on us, Akmo? These Western barbarians are fanatics, my lord. They have two faces and cannot be trusted. Do not permit yourself to be alone with this woman. Do you suggest I have an audience of witnesses? Mm, no, my lord. I suggest you hand her over to the soldiers to destroy. I can see the evil standing over her head like a black cloud. Akmo, I always take your advice. Tonight will be an exception. I can see the hate in your eyes, Phoebe, and it will do you no good. Forget what is past and look towards the future. Is there a future? There's a wonderful future here in the great king's service. We have good food, luxuries that only ladies of the nobility have, and we lead a life of ease and pleasure. As slaves? We aren't slaves. We're the great king's women. We have slaves of our own more than we need. Do you have freedom? Freedom to do what? To climb mountains, to swim in the rivers, to ride across the plains, to take a lover or take a husband of your choice. Well, no. Then you are a slave. You're trying to fight against the inevitable, Phoebe. You're right. We don't have that kind of freedom. But life is easy here, and you'll soon learn to enjoy it. I'd rather die than stay here. I'll make them kill me somehow. Oh, they'll kill you, if you wish. But slowly and horribly. Don't be a fool, Phoebe. Bow to the great king's will and let him be your master. After tonight, he may only call on you twice or three times a year. Tonight? He would, would still have me tonight? That is his wish. To do so would make me a traitor to my people. Do you think that by denying the king his pleasure, you will help to save Greece? No. I've heard what you did today. That was enough. Before this summer is finished, the great king will rule over all the world. Then your people will also be his people. That is true. If he conquers. With such an army, can he fail? Listen, Phoebe, we can be such wonderful friends in the future. Go to the great king's quarters and save yourself. Oh, why think about it so long? There's no other choice. Very well. You must tell me what to do. I shall tell you everything in the bath. But first I must tell Salkima that you're preparing. Dressed in a gold and green linen gown, Phoebe was later led to the great king's quarters, which were at the rear of the large tent. He was still in conference, and she was left alone to wait. She could scarcely believe her good fortune. Hanging from a central post were two gold lances. From them 
Her gaze went to the solitary Medean guard standing with his back to her in the entrance. Quietly, she lifted down a heavy lance and crept across the deeply carpeted floor. The guard remained immobile as she held the point of the lance inches from the back of the man's neck. Then she took a deep breath and lunged. <laughs> she withdrew the lance from the dead man and stripped off her gown. Phoebe's heart beat wildly as she took off the guard's uniform and armor and fitted it to her own slim body. And soundlessly, she stepped out into the night air. With little effort at concealment, Phoebe headed for the bridge. I want every man on duty around this camp put in chains. While that is being done, call out the Scythians and organize them into search parties. Oh, and send that stargazer Akma to me. Ah, here he is now. Go on, tell him, and be quick. My lord, I had an I omen. I don't want to hear your omens, Akma. The woman, the, 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 the Amazon has gone, run away. The omen concerned her, my lord. She killed the guard and ran off into the night wearing his clothes and armor. What do you think of that? I know it already, my lord. Oh, how can you know it? I've only just discovered it myself. The omen, sire. Oh, what omen are you babbling about? The woman will do us great harm, my lord. I saw it in the sky. The Macedonian woman will somehow be instrumental in destroying us. Are you mad, Akma? How can a stupid peasant woman do that? Such thinking is disloyal, even treasonable. Is it not my duty to tell you what I see? Unless you can bring me good omens, I don't want to hear your voice. As you wish, sire. Did you see anything else regarding this woman? I... I, I could not see anything good. Well, tell me what you saw. Well, from my interpretation, I can divine that she herself will not destroy us. Only that she will do something that will assist in our destruction later. You talk of destruction, Akmal! How can I, Xerxes the Great King, with the mightiest army the world has ever known, even contemplate my destruction? Such a thing is impossible. And how can a runaway barbarian woman be remotely connected with it? Why are you gazing up like that? Forgive me, my lord. The woman was captured when trying to cut away the bridge. If she were to succeed, how would it affect our advance? Affect us? We would be held up here for three or four days, the army divided and disorganized. And those days wasted are extra days for the Greek cities to unite and defend themselves in the mountain passes. However, she did not succeed. My lord, is she not free now and armed? You mean the bridge? Call out Algonor and his cavalry! Nearly through. Oh, if only the gods will give me time. Oh, that's the general alarm. Soon the whole camp will be looking for me. So far, none of the search parties have come this way. The rope is so tough. To slice through the thick ropes with a bronze sword was no easy task. Luckily for Phoebe, the Persians had not thought to guard the bridge. It was virtually in the center of their camp. But while the girl labored, the cavalry commander led his men straight for the bridge. And they descended on Phoebe before she could finish her task. She had two choices, either run for the darkness on the riverbank or dart out across the bridge towards the other side. She chose the latter. Gasping for breath, she ran before the horses, then... The strain of the men and horses snapped the half-severed ropes, and all were hurled down into the river. The Persians' armor dragged them down to a watery death, though a few could swim away. As Phoebe hit the chilly water, it revived her sagging strength. She was able to struggle out of the Median armor and came to the surface far downriver from the scene of her fall. Close by, horses struggled in the water to reach the bank, and large bulks of timber from the ruined bridge swept past. Phoebe grabbed at one of the large pieces and allowed it to carry her towards the river mouth. Seventy men and their mounts that woman has cost me. Oh, one day this Phoebe of Metherny will be found and I shall make her crawl and whine. No torture ever devised will be forgotten. Are you listening to me, Akmal? I am listening, my lord. Can you read that in the omens? I will try. Or will you see more Greek goddesses of destruction before me? 
Or will the same beauty of the West come to haunt me? I have seen nothing like that, my lord, but destruction, yes. No revenge for tonight's disaster? Not against the perpetrator, my lord, but many Greeks will die. And of the Medes and Persians? Many more of them will die, too. Ah, ah, but we have many to spare. Should all the city-states unite, they will still be outnumbered 25 to 1. Then, Akmal, you will see them run. Omens or no omens, when we pass through Thermopylae, they will have nowhere to run. Athens, Thebes, Corinth, Sparta, all raised to the ground. How dare they ever think to oppose me? Yes, my lord. Do you see all this, Akmal? Not yet, but tomorrow I shall make libations and watch. Do so, Akmal. And don't let me ever see your face until the time you see these things as clearly as I do. As you wish, my lord. I shall go and make offerings now. Yes, leave me. And tell Sulkima to bring me the Lycian woman, Chrysos. I doubt if the Macedonian woman will have confided in her, sire. You fool! Do you really think I wish to converse with her? As dawn broke, Anaxus and his men looked out from the top of Sinon Hill, far downriver from the Persian camp. <laughs> Look, the bridge is gone. But how? We saw Lysias killed and Phoebe taken. The Persians would not be likely to do it themselves. The gods are truly with us. Alcetas, I want you to ride and join Herion. Tell him the bridge is down and that Xerxes is delayed by at least three days. We will join him in the mountains when the Persians start to advance again. Now go, and may the gods go with you. You, Arenas, I want you to ride south and spread the news among the Greeks that there is yet time to organize. Tell them that the pass at Thermopylae is the place where Xerxes could be stopped. Arnaxus, there's somebody coming up from the river bank. You're right, Timo. It's far, but it looks to me like a woman. Arenas, take two men and see who it is. The astonished Macedonian horseman picked up and carried the exhausted Phoebe to the top of Sinon Hill. Relieved to see her alive, Anaxus had her wrapped in warm clothes and revived with sweet wine. After she had told him what had happened, he looked thoughtfully out towards the Persian army. You make me proud to know you, Phoebe. You have done more than any man so far to save us. My brother was a hero, too. He would have made a fitting husband for you. For a husband, the gods have decided for me, Anaxus. I feel as though I am taking away from Lysias what was his by right. Heroines should marry only heroes. Out there is a mighty host which must be fought. Before it is beaten back to Asia, every Greek will have to prove himself hero. Sometime later, when Xerxes' invincible army reached the pass of Thermopylae, they were met by 6,000 Greeks under the command of the Spartan king, Leonidas. For a long time, the Greeks held the pass, but a traitor led a Persian force around to their rear by way of a little-known path. Leonidas ordered all the Greeks back from the pass, keeping only his Spartans, numbering 350 men. They fought to the last man, and the delay forced Xerxes to halt his army for the winter. The following year, the combined forces of the Greek states met the Persians at Plataea and Mycale and soundly defeated them. By then, Xerxes had already left for Asia, an embittered and disillusioned man. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.